Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com and uh, I am also the medical author of the book Focus Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic, clinical examination of 7th cranial nerve cranial nerves part 46 facial nerve part 2 the clinical examination examination of the motor functions inspect the face for asymmetry or differences in blinking or eye closure on one side watch for spontaneous or involuntary movement so in the examination of motor functions we inspect the face for asymmetry or differences in the blinking or eye closure on one side watch for spontaneous or involuntary movement and uh, we look at all the conditions which are associated with various abnormalities of facial expression the last two are associated with the facial nerve if there is a flattened nasolabial fold with symmetric forehead wrinkles it indicates central facial palsy whereas if there's a flattened nasolabial fold with smoothening of the forehead wrinkles on the same side that means both upper and the lower part of the face are involved it indicates peripheral facial palsy the other conditions associated with various abnormalities of facial expression are one the masked faces seen in parkinson's and related extrapyramidal disorders Facial dystonia or procerus sign, that is a surprise sign seen in progressive supranuclear palsy, hatchet face seen in myotonic dystrophy, transverse smile seen in myopathic face, facial paralytica seen in general paralysis, myasthenic snarl seen in myasthenia gravis, rhesus sardonicus seen in Wilson's disease. Continuing with the examination of the motor functions, we check out on the muscle testing for frontalis, orbicularis oculi, buccinator and platysma. Frontalis asks the patient to raise their eyebrows and observe for symmetrical wrinkling of the forehead. Orbicularis oculi asks the patients to tightly shut their eyes and resist the examiner's attempt to open them. Buccinator compresses cheeks, keeps food under pressure of cheeks in chewing. Platysma have the patient open the mouth against the resistance or clench the teeth or wrinkle the skin of the neck. So commonly when we test the facial nerve, we ask the person to clench the teeth. We are testing the platysma. Facial reflexes. There are various facial reflexes associated which can be tested. The various facial reflexes are one, the orbicularis oculi, the focal uh, reflex, the orbicularis oculi, best illustrated by pulling back between the thumb and the index finger a fold of the skin on the temple on lateral to the outer canthus, then briskly tapping the thumb of finger sudden stretch of the muscle causes contraction of the orbicularis oculi with closing of the eye this we call as orbicularis oculi reflex then we have the non-focal that was the focal then we have the non-focal which is otherwise known as major sign depending on the site of stimulus especially seen in conditions of parkinson's disease tapping over the lateral aspect of the supraorbital ridge over the glabella or around the orbital margin can sometimes be illustrated by tapping the forehead as far as the hairline causes bilateral eye blinking response response can normally be, be inhibited but in patients with parkinson's disease and other conditions the patient cannot suppress the blinking then auditory palpebral or acoustico palpebral cochleo palpebral or cochleo orbicularis reflex reflex contraction of the orbicularis oculi causing eye closure usually bilateral but most marked on the ipsilateral side in response to a sudden loud noise uh, we usually see when there is a sudden loud noise we immediately close our eyes 
this is nothing but the auditory palpebral reflex then we have the menace reflex reflex eye closure in response to a strong light or a sudden visual stimulus whenever a threatening stimulus approaches the eye we immediately close the eyelid this is known as menace reflex it is a protective reflex to protect the eyes against any a uh, traumatic or any harmful stimuli then the more common phenomenon what we test is the bell's phenomenon the tight eye closure causes eyeballs to turn upwards it's a normal response but obvious only when the eye closure is weak and the rolling of the eyes is seen through the incompletely closed lids a method for testing reflex of gaze in patients with up gaze deficits so bell's phenomenon is a normal phenomenon so when we attempt to close the eyelids the eyeball goes upwards but when we have closed the eyes completely we can't see the eyeball going upwards but in persons with bell's palsy where they cannot close the eyelid completely where there is an incomplete closure of the eyelid when they attempt to close the eyelids the eyeball moves upwards so this is known as bell's phenomenon normally seen but well seen in persons with bell's palsy then we have the choth sex sign a uh, spasm or tetanic cramp like contracture of the ipsilateral facial muscles on tapping over the pes ensorinus anterior to the ear various degrees of responses may occur a sign of tetany but also occurs with hyper reflexia because of upper motor neuron dysfunction likely a motor example of tinel sign so these are the various facial reflexes which can be elicited so so far we have seen the examination of the motor functions now let's see the examination of the sensory functions testing of the seventh nerve sensory functions is limited to taste the shot, the tongue should remain protruded throughout testing of an individual substance and the mouth must be rinsed between tests the most common situation calling for assessment of taste is the evaluation of the facial nerve palsy if a patient has impaired taste the lesion is proximal to the chorda tympani a lesion distal to the stylomastoid foramen does not affect the taste now let's we have seen examination of the motor functions examination of the sensory functions now let's see the examination of the secretory functions the secretory functions of the seventh nerve can be usually evaluated by history and observation increased tearing is usually apparent decreased tearing may be determined from the history tear production may be quantitated with the schermer's test so these are all the concepts of the examination of the facial nerve the other important concepts of neurology i have put it in a book called focus neurology written by b dr sinwas it is available all over the world online especially from amazon if interested this book could be bought online very useful especially for students because it's in a question answer format i hope you have enjoyed listening to my concepts on the examination of the facial nerve if you have enjoyed it please share the link like but do subscribe to my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my ab page dr sinwas concepts thank you bye